And that's another interesting idea is that um, I, I did some reading. There's a, a choreographer and dancer, Twalia Thorpe, and she, in her autobiography, talks about the spine of a piece of work. And the spine is the beginning idea that you start with. And in the end, the viewer of the work may not understand what your original intention is, which she calls the spine, but it doesn't really matter. It's what gave the work structure. But the person is responding to the finished piece, and they may not see any resemblance to what the original intention was. And so I do have people that look at my work, and they just think it's a pretty picture because of the colors or because of the lighting. And that's all right with me because I know the intention behind the piece. But enough people will see the finished work and then respond to it in the way that relates to my original intention. And that's to me when the piece is most satisfying. But I don't expect everyone to look at my work and say, oh, I see loss of relationship here, or oh, I see a gender issue there. That's not the most important thing to me. That's what motivates me to make the piece. And enough people will see it that will validate that for me but that not everyone has to see that in order for me to feel like a piece is, is successful. Mm -hmm. I know when I was at the fair, my husband and I volunteer every year in the art building, and that's a really nice experience to get to talk to different people who come in and look at the artwork. And as you can imagine, it's a really diverse crowd that goes to the fair. We've got a lot of people who have artwork in the exhibit that come to see their work or family members. And then you have people that have just wandered in because it's air conditioned and it's too hot outside. So you get a real diverse crowd of people, and it's always really interesting to me to talk to the people and see the reactions to the different work. And when people know, we wear name tags, and sometimes people will know that you have a piece in the show, and people will give comment to me about what they feel they understood from looking at my photograph. And it's always really exciting to me when people see what, see something, they, they've brought their own experience to the picture, that resonates with what my original intention was, and they see it the way I meant it to be seen. It's very, very exciting when that happens. I remember a woman coming up to me at the fair this year and talking to me about her experience of seeing the picture and how it meant a lot to her to see it because we all think that we're the only one dealing with certain issues. And then when you see artwork that you understand is addressing that issue, it's very powerful. When I go to a, a museum, uh, it's interesting to, to note how long uh, people spend in front of a, mm. a work of art. Uh, I've, I've heard some people say that they get more out of it if they sit there and look at it for an hour, mm -hmm. a uh, Rembrandt painting, for instance. And others just go from painting to painting and spend maybe a half a minute on mm -hmm. one. Uh, when you go to a museum, uh, how, how do you feel about it? Do you, uh, do you spend much time in front of any one piece of art? Well, I tend to, I, I'm, I'm, in order for me to relax and really study a piece, I have to have seen everything in the space first. So I'll make a quick go around just to see everything. Because otherwise I'll be looking at a piece thinking, what's next, what's next? So I have to see everything in the room first. And then I'll go back and spend more time studying a piece. Um, it's like seeing a film, I think, a film that you like, a movie that you like. You watch it once just for the plot and the character development, and then after you get that satisfied, that interest and your curiosity, curiosity satisfied about that, then you can watch it a second time and pick up on the nuances and more of the, the message behind the movie, and you always see things the second time that you didn't see the first time. So when it comes to a museum, I tend to look quickly and then go back and look at them more slowly a second time. So you pick the one that is most interesting the first time around and then go back and look at that? Well, sometimes I'll pick the ones I don't like oh. because I wonder why I don't like it. And an interesting exercise that I have done and continue to do when I was first in art school, this was presented to me as an assignment where we had to draw a photograph. We had to actually draw it out. And this was hard for people who didn't like to draw. But what happens is when you spend time drawing a photograph, even one that you don't like. Um, sometimes you can learn so much about structure and learn about intention of the, the artist. And so I think it's important to look at things you do like and look at things that you don't like and to take that a step further and perhaps draw them out or manipulate them for yourself so you can understand 
what the artist went through to make it. And that helps you learn a lot about your own art and your own process and helps you be a better artist. So in the museum, when you go back to a piece, what's the longest amount of time you would spend studying? <laughs> I don't know. What do they say about people at the Grand Canyon? People spend about three seconds looking at the Grand Canyon when they finally get there. I really couldn't answer that. I have no idea how long I would spend. I've, I've sat in museums and I've drawn pictures before. I've got my little stool that they give you at the museum entrance and brought my paper and pencil. And I've sat there and drawn pictures before. So I've spent considerable time. So that would take several hours, right? It could. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's a lot longer than I've ever, <laughs> ever spent in front of one piece, well, even maybe, a Rembrandt. Well, maybe next time you go, you'll do that too. You'll bring your sketch pad and you'll do a drawing. Mm -hmm. It might make a difference in your, your artwork and your own paintings to do that exercise. Well, mine is done on the computer, so. But you still have to tell the computer what to do. Yes. So maybe it would make you make different choices in what you're telling the computer. That's an interesting idea, yes. Now, you, you said that you do shows at, uh, at different art galleries, mm -hmm. right? I do. Um, almost all of them include uh, an opening reception, don't they? They do, they do. And generally the artist has to pay to, uh, to do a show, or do the galleries uh, offer them for free? Uh, usually, it, it, it's a mixture. Um, you generally submit your work and then a juror from that gallery goes through all the, the entries that were submitted and would pick people to have a show. And those are often either free or sometimes you have to pay to enter. You know, there's two galleries here in Vermont where you pay, I believe it's $25, and you could submit up to three images for them to consider. So that, and then if you were picked, there'd be no further cost to you that you don't have to pay for the reception or the publicity. And you, you'd be welcome to do more yourself if you wanted to send out additional mailing cards or do additional publicity on your own, but you wouldn't necessarily have to do that. Then there's other galleries where they don't have any charges at all. Every gallery is a little bit different. Uh, right. They have their own policies. Right. Someday maybe I'll do a, a show just on galleries. Uh, I used to work, uh, I worked for a law firm at Rockefeller Center in, uh, in Manhattan. And after work, um, we were close enough to uh, the 59th Street uh, art galleries that uh, we could go to the opening reception. And almost every night in, uh, in New York, there's an opening reception at I'm one sure. of the art galleries on 59th Street. So we would go up there after work and have a glass of wine and a little cheese and uh, look at the paintings. Mm -hmm. uh, I never bought anything. And sometimes I wondered, you know, the poor artist is paying for, <laughs> for all this uh, food and, right. and liquor and... Uh, usually the artist doesn't pay for that. The artist doesn't have Not to usually. Pay. Usually the gallery pays for that. And the gallery charges commission on sales, so yeah. that's how the gallery makes their money. So usually the artist doesn't pay for that. After I got to Vermont and I tried to get my own work into a gallery, they wanted me to pay... Oh, really? <laughs> yes, for they, the reception. They wanted you to pay for the reception? Hmm. So I, I said no. Ha, huh, interesting. <laughs> so all of my uh, exhibits so far have been in libraries, mm -hmm. and places where I didn't have to pay. There you go. Yeah, that could become quite costly. Yes. Especially like you mentioned, that it's really a gamble. Just because you have your work in a show doesn't mean you're going to sell anything. Even at the fair, even though I won that award, I didn't sell a piece of work. And so, you know, if you have to pay for a reception or pay for advertising costs and then you don't sell a piece, then it, it is, it's, it's a gamble. That's part of why it's hard to make a living as a fine artist.